gee, I um, I, I can't. Uh, I don't know the answer to that question. Um, uh, I guess um, if they're publicly traded, uh, you can see a good part of their uh, balance sheet, and uh, you can also uh, find out if they have any uh, non-marketable securities like CDOs and SIVs. And also, they'll be rated by S&P, Moody's, and Fitch. And so you can get an idea from that perspective. Um, it's a one-to-one -one thing. I mean, every company's different. And uh, you don't know who's got problems and who hasn't unless you do a lot of digging. And I haven't. But I do know this. A lot of the insurance companies have lots of trouble, and particularly the life companies. And, uh, you know, they base their return um, on making 8 or 9% a year, and that's not going to happen. And uh, the stock market's going lower, and bonds are going to go lower because they can't go higher from this level. And so um, I think that life companies are even more dangerous than the casualty and medical and the others. So you, you just got to do your own work on it. I it, that's a that's a vast job, but if you if you get the sights on one company, uh, go find out if it's publicly traded, and if it is, you can get a fair amount of information on it, and uh, you can ask the company if they have any uh, toxic assets. Assuming the economic, political, and, and social uh, trouble that's coming, what would be a good business to go into, particularly for retirement age people who've lost in the market so far? Well, you could be an undertaker. <laughs> well, people are going to die, that's for sure. And um, uh, one of the uh, subscribers became a bails bondsman, which I thought was interesting. And, uh, and uh, but, uh, you know, there are fundamental jobs out there that uh, I, I suppose uh, having a, or working in a store that sold food would be generally a good idea. Um, geez, my mind's not working on that level right now. But you're just going to have to scout around. I mean, anything that works, do it. I just got a letter in from someone who wanted to work for an online gold uh, company. And I told him to go to Gold Money. And uh, he's retired. He, he's probably bored to death. And um, uh, he's smart and wants to do something. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of things. You just got to find out what fits your background and go do it. And, if it doesn't last for a long time, that's okay. Go find something else to do. One thing that we can do is we can't stop living. And, uh, um, you know. You know, i got to interrupt you here. Pardon? Because what you said was so important. Mm -hmm. You can't stop living. Life is for the living. And I tell people, and I've told them for years, every day after you pass 55, you have to reinvent yourself. Do not retire unless you're forced to. Work into your 70s, because if you don't need the money, maybe the kids or the grandkids do. So do that. Keep your mind and your body active. And you'll live longer as well. I don't know whether that's good or bad, but anyway. <laughs> and you'll probably live longer healthy. And so I had to interrupt and tell people that. Well, no, I'm glad you did because I get lots of calls, Bob. You know, people asking me my opinion, what they should do, and so forth, and uh, making decisions, just everyday decisions. They don't know what to do, and it's like you have to make these decisions because you just can't stop, and uh, um, it, and it's very difficult for people um, because we don't know what's coming. I mean, we do know what's coming, but we don't know how each and every one of us. Uh, will be affected by it and to what degree. So, Well, if you have specific problems, you can always email me. And just like, you know, <laughs> just, you know, just like you, people hear so many of these 
date line. These things are going to happen at, on such and such a day and oh, that's crazy. such and such a month. And, and you just can't stop and wait for these dates to pass to see if anything happens. And, well, today uh, was supposed to be the day. Today and tomorrow. And tomorrow that the world was going to come to an end or something. You know, people are waiting around. They're not buying gold and silver related assets because they're waiting to see what's going to happen. Well, if you waited all day, gold is now up 80 cents. You could have bought coins cheaper earlier in the day. Now you're going to pay more for them. Smarten up, people. Don't listen to all that garbage. Do what you're supposed to do. Get your life insurance policy in there. <coughs> the filter, the food, the weapons, the gold and silver coins. Stop wasting your time listening to some of these people who are off the deep end. And things are going to happen soon enough. <laughs> so, but Let's we not don't know. It. We don't know when it's going to happen, so that's why we have to take the, the time to do it now so when it does happen, then we are prepared. Um, what countries do you see in the world that are a little more stable and maybe a little more safe than others? Well, you want to be out of harm's way. And uh, places like Chile and Uruguay are good. Um, if you speak Portuguese, Brazil is okay, but you've got to stay out of the big cities because they have a lot of crime. Uh, Argentina is okay, but you're going to have to put up devaluing currency, uh, poor management, and, a, you know, a good, a fair amount of crime. And... Um, in Central America, uh, if you like gringos, you can go to Panama. There's lots of them there. Uh, the San Jose, Costa Rica, which is okay, um, but there's not a lot to do in San Jose. And uh, but there are people who uh, told me yesterday uh, that they're they're moving to um, Honduras, and which is fine. But you know, if you like the monkeys and stuff like that, it's okay. Uh, i got to be their civilization. And uh, I think Mexico is great uh, in Europe. Uh, I think probably uh, uh, Germany is a good place to go to if they'll allow you to stay there uh, because um, they have a very well-run government. Uh, they are not in debt like everybody else. Uh, there's just a, a, a number of things going for them, and, and also Switzerland. Uh, and, you know, in the countryside, in France and Portugal and Spain, uh, it should be pretty good, too, although Spain is is going to have a real hard time. Uh, Australia and New Zealand are okay. Uh, Canada, um, I don't have a lot of faith in the government. Uh, I'd certainly prefer any of the other places but Canada, and the reason why is they're just starting to have problems, and the Canadian people have been screwed by their different governments so often that uh, they never seem to get good ones, like America. They never seem to get good ones either. So I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend Canada because it's pretty cold there. I talked to a Canadian subscriber last night. It was 15 below uh, zero centigrade, so uh, that's out for me. <laughs> I like the monkeys. <laughs> yeah. Um... Chango, Chango. I also got an email in, too, and, you know, we talk about uh, uh, protection or, 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 or self-protection, and uh, we do have to be careful because there is legislation that is uh, trying to be pushed through 18 states about having the ammunition encoded, and um, uh, 18 states, Alabama, Arizona, California, Connecticut, Hawaii, Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, Maryland, Mississippi, Missouri, Jersey, York, Pennsylvania, New York, Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, South Carolina, Tennessee, and Washington. So, folks, uh, you know, you know, contact who you need to contact uh, because uh, they're going to try to really push it through. And uh, they say any, in this bill, any privately held uncoded ammunition must be destroyed by July 1st, 2011, uh, including hand-loaded ammo, and they will charge a five-cent tax on every round. So every box of ammo you buy will go up at least 250 or more, and uh, so um, just to keep that as an update and keep you folks reminded and 
and I know a lot of you listeners out there, you're not NRA friendly. Uh, there's different organizations out there, but, but you know they are part of the big lobbyists and they're part of the system and they're but they do help fight some of this legislation. So um, let's see. Um, we got some other questions here, Bob. Let me get to the right one. I was reading that and I lost my place here. If you'd like to talk until I find here. No. Here we go. He has stated many. No. <laughs> he has stated many times that the U.S. Treasury does not consider gold having any monetary value. Why would anyone constantly manipulate gold and silver if they truly believe it is only a worthless?